So we see the desire by uh, G7 countries to, because yeah. again, it's not just the West, it's also the South Koreans, the Japanese that have huge auto industries that also need this. So I think it's important we break this apart from being a Western versus China yeah. thing, because this is very much a G7 versus China thing. And so even they, though we can they, nuance even there, we can even have some nuance there. Yeah. Especially when you look at the trade relationship between South Korea and China when it comes to those critical minerals, let's my South Korea is one of the top countries has that has been receiving massive China influx when it comes to lithium processing in, in South Korea. So and, there is again, a kind we of also, yeah. we do need to point out the fact that at the political level is very different than at the corporate level. Exactly. Companies like Ford and Tesla have deals with Zhejiang Huayou Cobalt and other Chinese processing companies. They also rely on CATL for batteries. So there's a lot of mixing up in here. But at the political level, like what you've talked about, there is these blocks that are forming between China and the, some G7. of the G7 countries, G7 countries in that yeah. respect. And for the purposes of our discussion, we can use that today. But, and we're starting to see what the outlines look like of this parallel supply chain that they want to, to develop. Yeah. Uh, again, there are still questions whether they can do it. However, Giro, there is a huge problem that they're coming up. They're coming up against, and it's these incredibly low prices. And this is what I want to talk to today. So again, we've built up all the way in our discussion to get to this question of the low prices. And this came up earlier this week when I wrote a column on uh, CGSP that started to look at. What's going on with these low prices? Because the behavior of some of the Chinese mining companies in the key battery metals, that is cobalt, nickel, and lithium, there are about 50 minerals and metals that are that are that make up the majority of, a, of an EV battery, but those three are the big ones. Uh, some of the behavior does not correspond to market prices. Now, let me just kind of walk you through. You talked about this at the beginning, but let me show everybody what the charts look like here. And boy. It is ugly, okay? The pricing of these batteries, again, for producers and for countries and for miners is ugly. For consumers, this is great news, right? Exactly, I mean, this is yeah. gonna bring down the price of battery metals. Here's the price of cobalt. We're looking at reductions in the price of cobalt somewhere around 80% uh, since 2022 there. And you can see that is just a straight line down. It is not much different when we look at nickel, uh, again, peaking in the 21, 2021 here, and in those two two or three years, again, down about 80%, okay? These prices, I mean, they really skyrocketed. And back then in the early days in 21, 22, there was a lot of concern that we were going to be short of these metals. And so exactly. that pushed the prices up. And now we don't have that issue. And let me just show you where what we're looking at in lithium as well. There's been a slight recovery in lithium, uh, but when you look at those prices in 22, boy, straight down, there we go. And then not only straight down, this is very interesting from December, just flat, not moving anywhere. Okay. exactly. So that then begs the question, and this is what I really wanna get your take on, what the F are the Chinese companies doing? Because when you've got prices that are that low, the natural instinct at that point is to pull supply off the market, okay, in order to start driving demand up a little bit. That's not happening here. As you talked about in the very beginning of our discussion, and we can talk about what's going on in uh, in the DRC, and then next I want to bring Antonio in to talk about what's going on in Indonesia with nickel. But in the DRC last year, we saw a massive surge of production by uh, CMOC, which is one of the big mining companies. And they, in fact, produced so much that they overtook Glencore as the exactly. largest cobalt producer in the DRC. What the Chinese are doing, what CMOC and other mining companies doesn't make sense from a business perspective. What is your insight as to what you think they're doing? Two things to keep in mind. Last year, around June, July, uh, it's been reported that China had, the Chinese government had a meeting with different uh, Chinese mining companies talking about how to stockpile cobalt. 
So they took advantage of that. It was really a meeting where they agreed on the quantity of cobalt they needed to stockpile for the country. So they, that meeting really happened. And it was really interesting to see since then how Chinese companies have been stockpiling cobalt for since 2022, 2023, and really taking advantage of the low price. Because low price means that they can really buy cobalt on a very low price, very cheap. One thing. Second thing to keep in mind is the fact that the low price of cobalt also puts rose the cost of entry into the market for many non-Chinese competitors. Because we talk about that, how the U.S. is trying and other, com uh, other G7 countries are trying to come into the market. So when the prices are going low of those minerals, what's happened? Private companies, non-Chinese private companies are having a hard time to, you know, to find capitals to invest in those projects which leads to every operation that you do have on the ground kind of like don't find finance, don't find funding anymore you kind of slow down your operation this is the, the this is the one element the second the, the other element related to how it's impacting uh, current operations also the fact that current operation are seeing the operation they have to be cut down like shutting down operation australian companies to shut down lithium processing the code nickel and everything where they had really because it was not making money anymore so when you have that in perspective you realize that you have in a country you are you are now finding yourself in a context where china is trying to take advantage of that another third point that happened because of low prices last year still last year China what took took advantage of the fact that because of the change of prices, they changed the way cobalt is bought in usually in China. They start instead of using hydroxy cobalt as the reference prices, they started to use sulfur co cobalt which is much more lower to allow them to control the price on the market so they took advantage of all those four those elements to allow them to get much more but the fourth element i want to mention here that's really much more interesting to look into is the fact that because of that now there are so many vulnerable western companies out there that are just easy and open for acquisition and merge. And two major companies have expressed that. China Molybdenum in his report, in annual report in 2023, has clearly that CMOC, yes. They say, you know, we are now, because of the price, we are now much more open into merger and an acquisition of different operations in the world. Um, they say that in Indaba, in, in Indaba early this year in February, they also reported it a few, uh, few weeks back in their report. Zijin, Zijin, a Chinese, another Chinese company, Zijin Mining, also expressed that, is even announced that is in talk of a, a, a acquiring a huge major lithium operation in the world without giving much more details. So because of those low prices, many non-Chinese operations are becoming so vulnerable for the tech. And you'd believe that companies will be like, because of the geopolitical tension, we won't be interested of Chinese money. This is where you're wrong. Because this is where you have a company like a Canadian First Quantum going to China talking to the Chinese government and talking about how they can raise funds together or even where Jiangxi, Jiangxi Copper can be part of the deal to acquire new mining company, to, to acquire much more operation in first quantum. This is the context where you okay. see the Chinese are really taking advantage of the market to acquire now new projects and to really increase their, their share of the critical minor, uh, in the critical minerals uh, markets.